Hey guys, let's talk about Brunei. We took a bus into the capital. Brunei is a really small country. There's only about 400,000 people in the entire country. So due to its strong Muslim culture, one of the first things that we did is we actually went to the mall to go and find some traditional headdresses and clothing for the girls and for Mike and I so that we could safely tour around the, the city without kind of standing out as, as uh, tourists and travelers. Wow. This is our good friend Wadu. He's taking care of us. And he's got me a, a fresh new white intubi. And I have a beautiful Indian shop. And together we hit Brunei. And we're ready for the mosques. We went to the floating villages. Apparently, uh, Brunei is the largest floating village in the world. So the main coastline of Brunei where we were staying is actually quite modern. It came across to me to be almost comparable to an American suburb. But then when you break off of that and you take a boat over to the floating village, it becomes a lot more interesting from a heritage and cultural standpoint. It's the world's largest and oldest floating village. It's over a thousand years old. And from a standpoint of an old history, it's, it's a little bit more engaging than the main city. We did end up in this one area that was a bit more impoverished. It was uh, elevated once again on these stilts. We wanted to go to this particular mosque and we saw one uh, pathway to get there and it was along these docks on the shoreline. So as we walked through there, we realized that we were walking through definitely one of the poorer parts of the town. Uh, we came across this woman and what I took to believe being the neighborhood's children, but it was actually all of her children. She was 34 years old and she had 13 kids. Uh, which is just something completely unheard of in North American and I think Western European society. Hannah. Anna. Hannah. Anna. Oh, Anna. How are you, Anna? I'm awesome. How are you? Wow, well, very nice. You to like Brunei, yeah? <laughs> we Brunei. love Brunei. Good, good. Yeah. Open it. I feel, I feel like Western chocolate. Here, open it. Do it. You Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So as we left the final mosque that we explored, all of the mosques around the city actually started billowing out and projecting their Muslim prayers and the Muslim song that, that they cue as people go in to pray. And you could hear it coming from every corner of the city and there was this low ominous light about and it was really kind of interesting to, to walk through as you heard like the whole city almost stop what they're doing and go into a, a mode of prayer which it is pretty interesting to experience a culture that is directed so strongly by their faith and their belief system. As a North American, it's not as prominent as you'd find in other parts of the world, and definitely on the course of this trip through Asia, I think what we experienced in Brunei was probably the, the strongest influence from Muslim culture. But if you go in and you abide by their laws and their way of living, then you're gonna have no issues whatsoever. We absolutely loved it. It was strongly Muslim, but just respect that and you're gonna have a, a great time there because it really is an interesting place to travel to. After this, we're heading into the Philippines. The Philippines, it's actually the only Christian country that we're gonna be traveling through on this trip aside from Australia. So I'm really curious to see the contrast between Brunei and the Philippines. But hope you guys tune in next time. That was Brunei, adios. Hey! Oh, so you gave us a dust set? Hey, listen, better? Listen. Yeah.